All right, more Fantasia Festival quickies. We're going from worst to best. Let's keep going. One of the films I saw was called You Cannot Kill David Arquette. This is a very silly documentary about actor David Arquette trying to return to pro wrestling. About 20 years ago, he was brought into WCW as kind of a way to promote the movie he was in called Ready to Rumble. And they actually had him winning the whole thing and everybody got really mad. A lot of fans of pro wrestling thought it was kind of insulting overall. So now in this documentary, he's trying to reclaim his image as a wrestler. I guess also because he's not really doing much right now acting wise. The entire motivation of this documentary seems a bit nonsensical. Like you're trying to redeem yourself by doing the exact same thing that people were mad at you about. Either way, this documentary is still fun and mostly self-aware. There are parts of this film that are funny and parts that are interesting. I really enjoyed seeing the street wrestlers performing in the middle of intersections in Tijuana. Overall, this documentary feels pretty professionally made, but I guess one of my bigger issues would be that some parts feel a bit fake and exaggerated. I often got the impression that there was a lot of them deciding to film him doing something rather than him doing something and then them deciding to film it. Like, much of what was happening was just purely for the existence of the documentary and that's it. There was also an unironic Howie scream in the film. Some of the montages in this film felt a bit out of place and kind of unjustified in its tone. And the end sequence does feel a bit sloppy with how they decided to present it. Still, this was an entertaining documentary and was definitely worth watching. So whether you're a fan of wrestling or just want to see a silly movie, then check this one out. And I'm giving this one a 6 out of 10. Another film I saw was called Survival Skills. This is the feature-length directorial debut for Quinn Armstrong. The presentation of this film is pretty interesting. Basically, it's shot like an old VHS instructional video, and they use that style to their advantage to make the film seem pretty unsettling. The stylistic creepiness of this film reminds me a bit of Too Many Cooks. Basically, the main character is some dopey guy who is a part of the instructional video and doesn't seem to understand anything, and his partner is just annoyed with him the entire movie, and the narrator of the film is basically telling him rules to follow, but after a certain point, he doesn't really want to. It's a good setup for a film, and I really enjoyed what they tried to do with it. Unfortunately, it does lose its charm after a while, and some parts feel really slow. I feel like if this were a short film, it probably would have worked much better overall. It feels as though at least half of the movie is just completely normal scenes aside from the camera quality. If the style was pushed more heavily throughout the film, then it would not feel as slow. There are enjoyable parts of the movie that are morbid and depressing, but unfortunately there are also dramatic parts that aren't nearly as dramatic as the film thinks they are. There are good performances throughout. The main character's acting is a little robotic, but that's obviously intentional. There was a lot of potential for this film, although I don't think it was fully realized. The main plot of the film just isn't that interesting, and it seems as though the style is just acting in service of it. If there was more of a hook to the narrative, or if the entire film was wacky and crazy throughout, then it definitely would have been better. Still, this film was definitely worth watching, and if you want to see something weird, then check it out. I'm giving this one a 6 out of 10. Another film I saw was called Dinner in America. Now, this one was getting a lot of buzz from Sundance, and people seem to really enjoy it. There's a lot of energetic pacing in the editing. There's some funny, exaggerated sound design choices. The music, despite being a little repetitive, is a lot of fun and adds to the energy of the film. The acting was decent, and it was overall pretty well presented. But unfortunately, as the film goes on, it starts to feel a little sloppy. A lot of the intended entertainment of this film just seems to come from the main character being really edgy for the sake of being really edgy. It gets stale after a while, and it kind of gives off this vibe that it thinks it's a lot cooler than it is. Another issue I had with this movie is that the vast majority of it just feels so derivative. It wasn't very far into the film when I realized just how many scenes were very clearly trying to emulate Vincent Gallo's Buffalo 66, and that's a really great movie that I thoroughly enjoyed. And with so much of this film feeling like it's just trying to be that but not doing as good of a job, it really doesn't help the experience as someone who's watched and loved Buffalo 66. The tones of the film are different, and this one's clearly trying to be more of an intentional comedy, but yeah, the majority of this film just felt like it was trying to emulate a few other better things. There wasn't really anything about this that felt super unique or original. It's a much less subtle and much less deep version of other things I already enjoy. Thankfully, near the end of the film, it started to feel like its own movie. I was able to feel a lot more for these characters as it progressed. The second half of this film was a huge improvement upon the first. I really enjoyed what it turned into, and it's clear that there was a lot of potential that wasn't really fully realized. So even though there are parts of this film that felt sloppy or derivative, I enjoyed it overall. I probably won't ever see it again, but it was certainly worth watching. And I'm giving this one a 6 out of 10. Stay tuned for more Fantasia Festival quickies. I'm gonna record some more right now. Bye-bye.